Hello, I'm Steve Buchanan. I'm here with Eric Herbranson, my photography guru and good friend, who beautifully recorded this macro video footage in 4K, which you'll really appreciate when we go to extreme close-ups. Sun Endo's use of sonic energy to clean root canal systems is brilliant. This mechanism of action works so well in the smallest, most apical regions of canals, the gentle way procedure is changing our fundamental concepts of endodontics. The efficacy of multisonic cleaning puts the lie to the myth that cutting canals larger cleans them, as we know how it activates sodium hypochlorite and cleans the smallest, most lateral anatomy without any instrumentation. This molar is a case in point. CBCT imaging revealed the presence of an MB2 canal with its own apical portal of exit and several ladder rung connections to the MB1 canal. In an effort to learn more about the strengths and limitations of the gentle wave procedure, I intentionally avoided placing a single instrument in the MB2, only cutting a 1306 traverse rotary negotiation file to lengthen the MB1 canal, and then running gentle wave. Postoperatively, the mesial CBCT view of the MB root revealed that the entire MB2 canal system was cleaned well enough to be filled during a continuous wave down pack. What a root, what a cleaning technique. This lower molar had apically confluent mesial canal, so again, I intentionally avoided placing any instruments in the MB canal. After finishing the gentle wave procedure, I executed a continuous wave down pack through the mesial lingual canal and filled more than 10 millimeters of untouched MB canal and a mid-mesial canal as well. After seeing multiple cases like this, I'm inclined to think that less is more when it comes to treatment planning the instrumentation. This is the new look of RCT instead of the Zoftig shapes that Schilder made popular. We are now seeing endodontic treatment results that look more like Walter Hess's replicas than any successful result from the past. Okay, that's amazing, but it, there's a limit to all fun, so what are the limits of Gentle Wave? Well, we usually learn more from our failures than our successes, so let's take a look at Gentle Wave from that standpoint. I've only had two treatment failures using Gentle Wave, both of them in C shaped molars. This case began with a severe pulpitis and is now two months out, sensitive to percussion and biting pressure. Augmentin doesn't change it a bit, but NSAIDs turn it off, suggesting I was unable to completely clean all the degenerating pulp tissue out of the tooth during the gentle wave procedure. To test my hypothesis, I CAD designed a clear plastic block with an access cavity, two 14 millimeter long canals and an isthmus between them. Then I split the block, 3D printed the two halves, placed a thin slice of Italian prosciutto in the isthmus space and glued them together. A gentle wave platform was made with light cure sound seal and we're off. This is the isthmus irrigation research block in action. Already loaded with prosciutto and two rotary file shapes, one in the intended space on the left that was modeled as a canal, the other canal shape diverged mistakenly one millimeter laterally to the left of the modeled canal but it serendipitously improved the setup as it created both the isthmus loaded with the pulp replica as well as a one millimeter fin to the right side of the shaped canal path. The first thing a gentle wave procedural software does is a vacuum check. This is a 90 second validation procedure done with distilled water to confirm that there is an airtight seal between the tooth and the platform. A very effective strategy when frustrated during an MB2 hunt in an upper molar is to build a platform and run the vacuum check routine. The 90 seconds of distilled water in the presence of a large amount of multisonic energy generated just a millimeter away from the pulp chamber floor will remove the fibrous connective tissue from the pulp chamber floor that looks just like dentin, revealing the MB2 orifice. Now we see the beginning of the five minute sodium hypochlorite cycle shown at 8x for those with ADD. Notice how the irrigant activation is moving as intensely in the apical third of the simulated canal as it is in the coronal third. This, I believe, is due to the amplification effect of a tapering, decreasing diameter of canal, which is concentrating and amplifying the sonic energy. This is the most difficult test of multisonic cleaning, the ability to digest structurally intact pulp tissue in isthmus regions far from the primary canal. I'm really bored with all the studies that look at the cleanliness of the primary canal after a given method of irrigation. Who cares? McComb and Smith showed us how to do that in 1975 using 6% sodium hypochlorite and 17% aqueous EDTA solutions bought for almost nothing from a grocery store or a pharmacy. A totally clean primary canal can be achieved for 50 cents. The real test of an irrigation technique is its ability to digest and clean lateral anatomy, often the largest canal space in a molar. 
To date, no one has created an authentic benchtop model of irrigation efficacy that is able to demonstrate gentle waves effect on lateral root canal spaces. Now we can watch it happen in real time. Check it out. This structurally intact pulp replica, the Italian prosciutto, is literally being dissolved by the sodium hypochlorite as we watch. To this day, sodium hypochlorite is required for all cleaning of root canals, regardless of how you activate it, whether it's an $80,000 console or a uh, $15 ultrasonic tip. Uh, you have to use sodium hypochlorite if you use MTAD, if you use Q-Mix, if you use all these other things they say, uh, and of course use it with sodium hypochlorite. So um, we can't do without it, and we still are gaining the benefit of its activity. We've just finished the chloride cycle, now a quick water rinse, and it's on to an 8% EDTA uh, for two minutes. Now, one thing that's really important to see here is during this whole two minutes of time, and this is compacted, obviously, uh, time lapse, um, we're seeing no activity at all on the pulp tissue, and that is the case. It's only the hypochlorite that does that. So what does that mean? <laughs> we finished the whole molar PI cycle, and we still have pulp tissue remaining, and I think that answers why my C-shaped molar case remained uncomfortable afterwards. So what's the answer? It seems to be just a matter of time. The effect is working. So another molar PI has been brought online. Now we see that it takes another 2.5 minutes of sodium hypochlorite efficacy to get that job done. So what does that mean to clinicians who are using GentleWave? It means you need to charge patients with C-shaped molar anatomy another $200, and you need to break out another molar PI to get the job done. Is this a critique of GentleWave's cleaning efficacy? Absolutely not. It is, however, a fairly accurate description of the limits of this technology when faced with significant dimensions of lateral anatomy. As with all other irrigation methods that use sodium hypochlorite, it turns out that the primary physical limitation of gentle wave efficacy is time. After $50 million spent by SunEndo in the development of this amazing new tool, it boils down to the time that sodium hypochlorite needs to do its job. Nobody has ever activated sodium hypochlorite like the scientists at SunEndo have. However, the job we must do as dentists providing root canal therapy to patients is to allow the time needed for sodium hypochlorite to do its job. Activate it, NPI it, gentle wave it, pips it, you're still held by the constraints of sodium hypochlorite's efficacy in a root canal system. Thank you for watching this video presentation. This is Steve Buchanan and Eric Branson signing off. We'll see you at the apex.